Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now in this video, I will talk about config files in Python, what they are useful for and how we can um, use them and implement them in our code. So config files basically allow us to provide configuration for different requirements. Now they are useful in many different situations. So for instance, you want to provide some uh, data, some configuration outside of your program so that it is easy to change by anyone who would like to kind of tweak and adapt your code uh, so they don't have to go inside the code, find where the information is used and change it there. We put all that information in a separate file and the program takes that information from the separate file and uses it whenever it's needed. So that is basically what app configuration is or software configuration. Then config files are also useful for when you have sensitive information, when you don't necessarily want um, that information to be available in your main code, just for um, a bit of obfuscation and um, making your code that much more secure. Then you can also provide different configuration files for different environments. So if you have a development environment, a staging environment, and a production environment, you might want to have um, separate configuration for all those environments. And config files allow us to, uh, are a really elegant solution for us to achieve that. Config files are usually .ini files, okay, so .ini files. This is uh, quite a standard format and they have a certain structure. So let's have a look at the structure of a configuration file. Basically, a configuration file is divided into sections. So here you see our file has two main sections. The first one is the account. This is a virtual banking system. Of course, we're not going to put any functionality in our code, but just to kind of give you a bit of context, let's say. So we have the account here, which is the first section, and the section name is put inside square brackets. Okay, so you can see the square brackets here. And then down below, we have sort of a key value pair. So very similar to a dictionary. So you would have on the left side, you would have the key equals a value on the right side. And as many um, key value pairs as you need in that configuration. Once we are done with that, we have another um, section of our, um, of our file, which is the client section. And again, uh, you can have as much configuration here as you need, as many key value pairs. And of course, as many um, sections of your file as you need. Okay, so this structure is um, unlimited. Basically, you can do as much configuration as your uh, application needs. So let's go ahead and put this configuration file in our code before we actually start to use it. So I'm in my project here, I'm going to right click, select new file. And let's just give it a simple name, something like config.ini. You can name it whatever you like, obviously. So here, I'm going to create an account section. Okay, and here I'm going to put status equals active. Then let's put an ID, just there's a few random numbers um, and a pin. Again, a few random numbers, but they need to be four because that's usually how pins work. And then let's say we have a client. Uh, this is a section, so a client section. You have a name, let's say James, and let's say surname. You can put, of course, whichever configuration you like. I'm going to put here bond and I'm going to put profession spy. OK, James Bond. Right. So this is our configuration file. Now we will use this file in our Python code to read the configuration um, that we have set here. And of course, we will be able to use that once we have it in our variables in our code. So how do we do that? Well, we have this object, this construct which is a config parser. So the config parser allows us to parse the file that we pass to it, the configuration file, and then it will allow us to retrieve that information in a very easy way. So we need to use the config parser from the config parser library. Okay, so let's go in our code. I have here a new file config uh, files.py. I'm gonna say from config parser import config parser. All right, so now I have my config parser here. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to define the file name is going to be config.ini. Then I'm going to say config 
equals, and I'm going to create a config parser object. And from that, I'm going to say config.read, and I'm going to pass my file here. All right, so now I have my file in my config parser. So we can go ahead and actually access some data uh, from that file in our code. So how do we do that? Well, we can access, for instance, the sections of our file. Okay, so config.sections. Let's try that. I'm going to print config.sections. So if we run that code, we will get basically a list of the sections that are available. Okay, so now if we access one of those sections, config, and this, since it's a list, then we can access each element. I'm going to say account. I'm going to run that code and we get a section account. You can see that this is an object. It's not a list or anything else. But um, I think we can transform that into a list if we want to. Yes, and then we will get the list of elements from that, um, from that section. Okay, let me just uh, duplicate that. I want to leave both structures here in place. All right, so accessing elements. Now, how do we access an element from a section? Well, it's quite simple. We access first the section and then the element. Okay, we can think of it as a list of lists or a list um, that contains dictionaries rather. Okay, so here, let's say we want the pin. So we can say print config of account and then we can access the uh, let me see where I am there we are pin okay so if we do that we get the actual pin number okay so very very easy we can access first the section then the element in that section all right moving on so let's say we have all the information we need but we need to um, update the configuration file. In particular, we want to set or rather create a new section and set another um, element in that new section. So how do we do that? It's quite simple. We have the function add section and that will allow us to put a new section here. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have config.add section. Let's say we want a bank section. And then we can say config.set. And here we have three elements. So first is the section. It's going to be bank. Second is the key. Okay, so that is going to be, let's say, branch. Or let's say name of the bank. And finally, we have the value. Let's say HSBC. Okay, so um, now we have that information but at the moment it's only in our config parser so what we want to do is we want to set that configuration in our config.ini file how do we do that well we already know how to write files so we can do simply um, with open the file in a write mode we write to that file so the config has the method write to a file that allows us to basically dump all the configuration into that particular file so let's do that with open. Um, let's say we have our file, okay, which is the variable we defined at the top here. Open file in mode W as config, let's say. Um, no, let's call this config file because we already have a config. So we can say config dot write. And here we have our config file. Okay, so our config, which is the config parser, will write to the config file, which is the one um, we have opened here, the open file. So there we go. Let's go ahead and run this. Okay, I've run this. And then if we look in the config.ini, we will find the new section bank with the new name and the value that we give it. So there you go. That is how you would use um, config files. You can have as many of these as you want and for each individual um, environment you can open a separate file to have a different configuration for that file. Also, if you want to have some um, more sensitive information, let's say like a username, password or in our case the PIN number, then you can put it in a config file so that it's not available inside your main program, right? So 
Um, there's a bit of not much security, but you know, anything is better than nothing, right? So it's always better to do as much as you can and config files remove some sensitive information from your code to put it in a separate place.